I tested four different Galaxy watches in the sleep lab and the results are very interesting but also very confusing. In this video I'll share all the results and we'll also compare the performance of the Galaxy watches to other devices like the Apple Watch and the Aura Ring. And I'm happy to report that some Galaxy watches actually performed quite decently, however older Galaxy models actually did better in my testing than the newer ones, but I suspect this has nothing to do with the older watches doing better overall, but potentially due to all Galaxy watches struggling in particular circles. Circumstances. Now as always there are timestamps in the description below to not waste your time, let's get to it. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now when the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6 and 6 Classic were released, I asked a friend who runs a sleep lab in the Netherlands if I could test them using his polysomnography devices. Luckily he agreed and his students were kind enough to help me attach all the electrodes. It took a while to also analyze all the data but it's here now and the results are super interesting. I also tested the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 and 5 Pro in the sleep lab here in Austria earlier this year and I have to say though, all results combined are also a bit weird. Now for those of you that are not familiar with the term sleep tracking, what do I mean by this? Well in the sleep lab we use a device that measures brain waves eye movement, heart rate and muscle movements to calculate when you were in light sleep, deep sleep, REM sleep and also when you were awake. Now this is the scientific gold standard but it's basically impossible to use each night because there's so much work. So smartwatches and other trackers try to estimate the same stages with less information, usually heartbeat information and movement data. Now over the last few years the algorithms that companies like Apple and Google for instance use have improved a lot but there are also plenty of brands out there that have pretty bad sleep stage tracking. So let's see in which of those camps the Galaxy watches fall. Now each device was just tested for a single night so you do need to take the results with a grain of salt but they do potentially reveal an issue with the Galaxy Watch's sleep stage tracking. So without further ado let's get to the results. I want to start off with the results I got for the Galaxy Watch 5 which I actually tested on Teresa. Now she was kind enough to join me in the sleep lab for two nights and one of those nights she wore the Galaxy Watch 5. Now on top are the sleep stages as recorded by the polysonography device or PSG in short and on the left are the sleep stages as recorded by the Galaxy Watch 5. And each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the stages according to the PSG device was predicted at each sleep stage by the Galaxy Watch 5. And if they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. Now first of all we see that about two thirds of what was deep sleep according to the PSG device was also deep sleep according to the Galaxy Watch 5 so that's pretty good and most confusion in this case was with light sleep. The light sleep agreement was also pretty good at 85% and the confusion could be with any of the other sleep stages. Now REM sleep agreement is not quite as good though still reasonable at 62% and most confusion is with light sleep. Now awake time detection is reasonable I would say at about 63% and again most confusion is with light sleep. So overall not bad but we really need to look at the individual night to see what was happening. Now looking at the individual night over time will help us understand it even better and that's displayed right here. On top we have the sleep stages according to the PSG device with along the horizontal axis the clock time and the sleep stages on the vertical axis and on the bottom we have a similar plot but now for the Galaxy Watch 5. Now in purple right here I highlight the deep sleep as recorded by the PSG device and you can see there's a pretty decent agreement between the PSG device and the Galaxy Watch 5 when it comes to the deep sleep. The longer segments generally match quite well between the Galaxy Watch 5 and the PSG device so I would say there are four longer segments and all of these were also detected by the Galaxy Watch 5, just some of the shorter segments were not detected. And for REM sleep we actually also see a pretty good agreement. So there were four REM sleep segments, one, two, three, four, and all of these were also detected by the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5. And this is what many watches struggle with, so this looks quite good. It did detect too much REM sleep for this first segment right here and too little for the second and third. The fourth one was basically spot on, but overall this is pretty good. It detected the correct amount of REM sleep segments and also in the correct position. And that also means we can see the sleep cycles based on just the data from the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5. So you go through roughly four to six sleep cycles each night, each one starting with light sleep and deep sleep marked here in blue and each one ending in REM sleep marked here in red. And as you can see Teresa likely had one, two, three, four sleep cycles and all of these were also detected by the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5. So that's pretty good. 
Awake time detection was also pretty good by the Galaxy Watch 5, I would say. It correctly detected when Teresa fell asleep and also more or less when she woke up. And also some of the shorter awake moments throughout the night match between the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 and the PSG device. It's by no means perfect. It misses a lot of these shorter awake moments, though many of those shorter awake moments might be filtered out. Still, overall, in my opinion, this looks pretty good. There's quite a few matching segments. So these results actually don't look that bad. Now while Teresa was sleeping with the Galaxy Watch 5, I tested the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro for a single night on myself. So let's take a look at those results. After that we'll see how this compares to many of the other devices out there like Apple Watches and Aura Rings. And finally we'll take a look at the newer generation of Galaxy Watch. And here we have a similar overview to before, but now looking at how the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro performed on me. And this looks pretty good, though compared to how the Galaxy Watch 5 performed on Teresa, the deep sleep and light sleep agreement is a bit worse, and the REM sleep and awake time detection a bit better. Now let's look at it in more detail. So deep sleep agreement is pretty good, though not amazing at 52%, and most confusion is with light sleep. Light sleep agreement is also pretty good, with about two thirds of the light sleep that was detected by the PSG device also being detected by the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, and most confusion in this case was with REM sleep, but also a bit with awake time. Now REM sleep detection was actually pretty good with a 75% agreement, meaning that 75% of the REM sleep detected by the PSG device was also detected by the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, and confusion was either with deep sleep or light sleep. Now awake time detection was really good in this case, with about 90% of the awake time detected by the PSG device also being detected by the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, and confusion could be either with light sleep or REM sleep. And again, looking at the night itself over time is actually quite informative. So this is a similar plot to before, but now for the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. And as you can see, there's generally a pretty good agreement between the PSG device and the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. So first looking at deep sleep, we see that some of the deep sleep detected by the PSG device was also detected by the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, but some of it wasn't and also some extra deep sleep was detected. Now, as we saw based on the percentages, REM sleep agreement seemed pretty good at 75%, meaning that 75% percent of what the PSG device detected as REM sleep was also detected as REM sleep by the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. And that's also what we see right here. So these three segments were all more or less detected by the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, but the first wasn't. So the position of this REM sleep segment doesn't match with the position of the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. So that isn't ideal. I'm not sure what's going on here. It was actually deep sleep according to the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. That also means we cannot fully correctly see the sleep cycles based on just the data from the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. So this one should have been shifted a little bit later. Still overall, this doesn't look bad. And as we can see, awake time detection was also pretty good, though it is a bit inflated because I was awake for a long time at the end of my night. Here in the middle, it also detected some of these longer awake moments, though basically all of the shorter awake moments in this second part of my night were not detected by the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, though it might be that Samsung intentionally filters out some of these shorter awake moments, and it also detected some extra awake time right here, though overall I'm pretty satisfied with this result. However, let's put this into perspective by comparing the performance of the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro to that of many other watches I tested on myself. Now this graph right here shows you an overview of the agreement of different watches with the PSG and EEG reference devices. Along the horizontal axis we have the average agreement over the individual sleep stages and on the vertical axis we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. Now the better the agreement the more to the top right the device is. And I have to say this overview is slightly complicated because I use different reference devices. So the devices marked in purple blue were tested against the polysomnography device, so the same device we're using in this video. The devices marked in green were tested against the ZMAX EEG headband, so a scientific EEG sleep tracker, which is not quite as accurate as a PSG device, but still quite good. And the devices not marked in any color were tested against the Dream 2 EEG headband, so my normal reference, but Dream went bankrupt, so I cannot use it anymore. But we are going to focus on the blue purple one, so the ones tested against the polysomnography device. And the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro is right here. So it's doing pretty good, though not amazing. The Aura Ring is doing better, and especially Apple Watches and the Nukua app we looked at last week are doing better. I would say this is still pretty good, but there are better devices out there. These are definitely better performing watches on the top right right here. Now, as regular viewers will notice, the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro has shifted a little bit to the top right compared to past videos. This is very technical, but in short, in my analysis, I now allow for a linear time shift. So if there's a bit of timekeeping difference, this will be corrected for now. So because I correct for that, it's now a bit better than before. 
But to summarize, compared to other devices, it seems to be doing pretty decently, though not amazing. Most Google products are a bit better, and especially Aura Rings, Apple Watches, the Nuco app, and also the HD Pod 3 are just a bit better than the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. But there's definitely worse devices out there. The one thing I cannot really explain is that when I compared it against the Dream 2 EEG headband, it didn't do quite as well. It could be due to a combination of multiple reasons. The Dream 2 might not be the perfect reference, also, this one night that tested the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro might not be completely representative. There might be many things going on here. But I also plan to test the Galaxy Watch 6 and 6 Classic against the ZMAX EEG headband to see where this ends up. So that actually looks quite good for the Galaxy Watches, at least based on these tests. They're not quite as good as, for instance, Apple Watches. But for these two nights on me and Teresa, the results are still quite good. However, as I alluded to before, the results based on the Galaxy Watch 6 and 6 Classic were not quite as good. So let's take a look at those results. However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. And actually before I had the wrong link to my YouTube Shorts channel, that's correct now. Also, I'm trying to become part of the first people who receive watches to review from companies like Garmin and Samsung. And if you want to help me make that happen, it would really help if you like, subscribe and or comment. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now, enough self-promotion. Let's take a look at the performance of the Galaxy Watch 6 and 6 Classic. And the result was actually worse for the Galaxy Watch 6, which is displayed right here. The Galaxy Watch 6 did not detect any deep sleep at all for this night, which is of course not very likely. You can see the whole top row here is 0%. So we can see that 0% of what was deep sleep according to the PSG device was also deep sleep according to the Galaxy Watch 6. And most of it was actually detected as being light sleep instead, but even some as awake time. Light sleep detection was okay-ish at about 60%, but a lot was actually being confused with the awake time. So it predicted awake time instead of light sleep. RAM sleep detection wasn't that terrible at about 70%, and most confusion in this case was with light sleep, and awake time detection again wasn't very good at about 40-ish percent with much being confused with light sleep instead. So overall for the Galaxy Watch 6 this doesn't look very good but I really have to show you the individual night. And here you can see that night recorded by both the PSG device on top and the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6 on the bottom. And as you can see, I didn't have a very good night of sleep. I was awake a lot. I really had some trouble sleeping, partially because of the PSG device. I was also sleeping at my parents' place, so not my normal bed. But that's one thing I really want to point out. This is not a typical night of sleep for me. I normally sleep quite okay, I would say. Now, as you can see, none of the deep sleep recorded by the PSG device was recorded as deep sleep by the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6. So let's quickly move to REM sleep. So the REM sleep segment still matched pretty well, I would say, even for this difficult night. I had one, two, three REM sleep segments, and all of these were detected by the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6. The duration is a bit different, either too long or too short, and a bit of extra REM sleep was detected here as well. This still looks pretty good. Out of all the sleep stages, this is the one where the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6 did best, which is surprising since many watches struggle with REM sleep. And awake time detection is also really a mix. Some of the awake time really matches well, as you can see right here, for instance, and some of it right here. But even with awake time, you can see that the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6 really struggled. Now, what I figured might be the case is that the results could be worse because I made a new account on a new Galaxy phone for the Galaxy Watch 6. So it still needed some time to learn my sleep patterns. Luckily, I connected the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic to a phone and an account which had many older Galaxy Watches connected to it before. So it already had a bunch of data to work with on my sleep patterns. So let's see how this one did. And we can indeed see that the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic did a bit better than the Galaxy Watch 6, though still not great. Again, deep sleep is something that the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic also really struggles with. Only about 22% of what the PSG device detected as deep sleep was also detected as deep sleep by the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, and most of it was instead predicted as being light sleep. Now, light sleep agreement is similar to what we saw for the Galaxy Watch 6 at about 70-ish percent, with a lot of confusion being with REM sleep, but also some with awake time. Now, REM sleep detection is again the best sleep stage for the Galaxy Watch at about 87%, with any confusion being with light sleep. And similar to what we saw for the Galaxy Watch 6, awake time detection again isn't that great at about 32%, with most confusion being with light sleep. But here again, we really need to look at the individual night.
And here we again have that individual knight with on top the PSG and on the bottom the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. And again the deep sleep marked in purple right here doesn't match very well between the PSG device and the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. Some of it agrees, so here there's a small segment that was also detected by the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6 Classic and some extra was detected as well, but the later portions of deep sleep were not detected. Even some of it was detected as a wake time by the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, so that doesn't look amazing. And the REM sleep detection actually looks similar to what we saw for the Samsung Galaxy Watch 6. So most segments are detected though the duration is a bit different and some extra is detected. So it detects way too much REM sleep right here. About the right amount right here for the second segment I would say. And also about the right amount for the third segment. Only some extra REM sleep is detected right here as well during my awake moment. And similar to before, awake time detection is a bit of a mixed bag. So some of it is detected, but way too little of it is detected overall. So it only detects some of the awake moments during my long awake period right here, but all the other awake moments are basically missed. So these results for the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic definitely look a bit better than the results for the Galaxy Watch 6. So having a bit more historical sleep data might have helped the performance of the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. However, it still isn't good. The results we saw for the Galaxy Watch 5 and 5 Pro were substantially better. So why is this? Well, my suspicion is that the Galaxy Watch 6 and 6 Classic struggled because I had quite a bad night of sleep, which is atypical for me, and it also doesn't look like a typical night of sleep for most people. I was awake for quite a bit, and this probably threw the algorithm off. I can imagine that the algorithm was trained with the expectation of a more or less normal night of sleep, and if my night is actually very different from this, it struggles. And just to show you that the performance can be better even for a difficult night, I wore the Aura Ring at the same time for the same night. And here we have the confusion matrix of the Aura Ring for the exact same night that we were looking at for the Galaxy Watch 6 and 6 Classic. And you can see a much better agreement between the Aura Ring and the PSG device. So deep sleep agreement is pretty good with about two thirds of the deep sleep detected by the PSG device also being detected by the Aura Ring. Light sleep agreement is very good at about 90%. Also REM sleep agreement is really good at about 93% and awake time detection isn't bad at all at 64%. So overall a much better performance than the Galaxy Watch 6 and 6 Classic. But let's also take a quick look at the individual night. And again here we're looking at this same night with the PSG on top but now the Aura Ring on the bottom. And as you can see this shows a much better agreement. First, if you look at deep sleep, we see a pretty decent agreement, though the later deep sleep wasn't detected by the Aura Ring, but the early deep sleep does match quite well. REM sleep agreement is also basically spot on, though it detects a bit too much REM sleep here in the first segment, otherwise really good. And the wake time detection is also much better than what we saw for the Galaxy Watch 6 and 6 Classic. The long segment is basically spot on, also this longer segment right here, though the Aura Ring also misses many of these shorter awake moments right here. So it's not perfect, but definitely a lot better than what we saw for the Galaxy Watch 6 and 6 Classic. And as I mentioned, this is really an atypical night of sleep for me. This is really a night with really poor sleep quality, whereas most of my nights I tend to have good to at least normal sleep quality, I would say. Now this shows us that there are trackers out there that can potentially deal with this kind of atypical night. Now this is all based on a single night of sleep tracking so we cannot draw any definitive conclusions. But if my suspicion is true that the Galaxy Watch's algorithm struggles tracking nights of sleep that are different from normal, this would be an issue. Because it's exactly these weird nights where the insights you get from tracking are most valuable and you want the most accurate representation of the truth. Now I don't actually think that Samsung changed anything about their sleep stage tracking algorithm from the Galaxy Watch 5 to the Galaxy Watch 6. I really think that the performance might be worse because of the atypical night of sleep. However, uh, we need more data to be sure. Still, these results were very interesting, so I wanted to share them with you. Now, as you saw, the Aura Ring did quite well under all circumstances. And if you want to know more about this, I also made several videos looking into the Aura Ring, which I'll link up here. Now, the Apple Watch is a very good sleep stage tracker, which I know isn't popular with people that prefer Android. And several commenters have called me an Apple fanboy, but I really aim to just share the results as I get them as objectively as possible. Possible. Now other good sleep stage trackers include for instance the HSleep Pod 3, also the Whoop Strap, though the latter is not quite as good. If you do decide to get a Galaxy Watch, an HSleep Pod 3, a Whoop Strap, an Aura Ring, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, and you want to potentially save some money and at the same time support the channel, there are different affiliate and non-affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. Also, given that you watched this whole video on the 
the Galaxy Watch, check out my initial review on the Google Pixel Watch 2, which should soon get an updated review as well. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.